Hey guys, welcome back to A Couple Nurses and Code Boom Bullshit. It's your girl Monica. I'm Deepak Darrow. Today we're going to be discussing just overall how my, you know, first year as a SRNA has gone for me. Any tips that I have for you guys. Um, and yeah, let's get started. Okay. So you're over half a year and a half into your program now. Um, I'm a couple months past my first year mm -hmm. in my CRNA program. So I feel like it was just right for us to kind of finally do a video talking about our first year. I agree. Um, you know, just because there's a lot of videos out there. Everybody has their first year of CRNA school. So it's like, let's do our, let's do our part and tell you guys our perspective of it all. Yeah, you know, I, I got to add on there, you know, the, the technicalities are very important. I've hit a year and, uh, seven months a year and seven months so i see a little light not much but i see a little light at the end yeah, of that tunnel you're, that's you're for halfway sure. through yeah so um a little over a little over halfway through and it's been crazy um honestly uh my program is more front loaded but not like cordero's to where it's 100 percent front loaded so here in august literally in the next like two days i start one more didactic class and moving forward, we'll be working on our DMP projects, and that'll kind of carry on over until we graduate. Um, so we'll just have a little bit of online classes. So, like I said, it's not 100% front loaded, but those, um, those that first year for sure was a very large and heavy 18 credit hour course um, semester. So that was definitely rough. So I'm, I'm very thankful to be done with that aspect of schooling for sure. Yeah, uh, one of the biggest questions I was going to ask you is, do you wish your school was integrated? Like, do you wish you would have had some clinical experience within the first three months, four months of you starting your program, now that you are in clinicals, you know? I think that's something to ask yourself independently on how you learn. Um, and that's, that's such a good question. You know, that's something that you really need to evaluate yourself on in terms on how I said how you learn and what kind of program is going to be the best fit for you. I can see the benefits of an integrated program. I really, really can because, you know, we're walking into clinicals and although we have ICU or some may have a little bit of ER or uh, pediatric ICU knowledge, but for myself having, you know, that ICU knowledge, you know, stepping away from the bedside kind of takes you away from your routine, essentially, what you were, you know, what you were really good at, you know what I mean? Because you were doing it every single day. So it can feel a little bit awkward, you know, whether you're talking to patients or, you know, doing basic skills like an IV, you got to kind of have a refresh your memory, you know what I mean? And, you know, everyone's different, mind you, it may come to you back like muscle memory. Like it was pretty simple for me to start my IVs, which I was thankful for. In terms of integrated, I don't wish I went to an integrated program for myself just because I'm a little anxious coming into this next semester where I'm going to have a pretty difficult, you know, cardiopulmonary uh, principles course. And it's, it's, you know, it's one of those heavy courses, even though it's just one, along with prepping for your DNP project and, you know, wanting to spend majority of your time in clinicals because that's where, you know, the fun is, right? Even though yeah. there's challenges. Um, I can't imagine going through that with like three courses, three or four courses and being expected to show up to clinicals, have your care plans ready, you know, when that clinical experience is still new, no matter where you're at in the program, you know, it's still a new experience. It's, it's different from what you were doing in the past. So I, I like the way that it's going right now because the way that I learn, I like to, although I am like hands-on person, like I can see the benefits of an integrated program for sure. Like you're learning the material and you're seeing it firsthand. So you're able to kind of paint this huge picture together, right? Yeah. Um, but then there's all these discrepancies, you know, because how you learn a book versus how you actually practice sometimes can be a little bit different. So, I like the way that things are going for me because, you know, I was introduced with a really large amount of content and information for the last, you know, year and a half. And now I've surprised myself with being able to retain that. Or even if I read back up on something, I'm like, oh, yeah, like this is how this works. And, you know, being able to take care of patients and apply that knowledge to my patients, it's I can see the benefits of it. But again, everyone has their different kind of cup of tea, like for me. I, I do like the way that my program is structured. I do wish it was a little bit more like yours in terms of 100% front-loaded. Mm -hmm. Once you start clinicals, like, you're done. So, yeah. 
Yeah. You know, I, I'd like us to get one of those people on that are in an integrated program just to see, yeah. just to see how their experience was, because I feel like you know, four months into your CRNA program, you're still so green. And if you're talking about putting a care plan together six months into your program, it's like you barely even really understand that right. pathophysiology. Right. And, you know, how drugs really work. And I'm sh I know it's going to eventually come, but it's like, when does that click, you know? But I feel like maybe those people that are in integrated programs, they're a little bit stronger early on by the time that we start our uh, clinical rotations, which mm -hmm. would make sense, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I think for me, balance in life and going the route that I'm going with with a front-loaded program has just helped me personally, and that's what I prefer. Front-loaded program was stressful as it is. I just I can't imagine dividing those courses in half and being at clinical, showing up every day, like you said, prepping a care plan, taking care of patients, putting people to sleep, like. In the OR, in the think, OR. thinking about a test you have. Oh my two God! Days. Like my anxiety would go through the roof because even having <laughs> I'm like studying right now. Exactly, like even being an 18 credit hour, you know, and I put such an emphasis on that all the time because it was, <laughs> it was hell. You know what I mean? But like yeah. having that, even like I said, cut in half, and like you said, thinking about a test at the same time, like that would drive me nuts because when I was just in those semesters, and you know, I finished studying for the day. A little bit of panic would kind of set in in terms of like, oh, man, like I didn't spend this much time on a different course. So, like I said, being in the OR and having that stress, I don't know. But I've heard really positive things about people that are in integrated programs, not to shy yeah. anyone away from, you know, that option. Like I said, you really need to, like, evaluate yourself on how it is that you learn best. Yeah. And then there's always pros and cons to either one. Like, Absolutely. Like we were talking about, the people with the integrated programs, like they're getting hands on early. early. Like they see they see the flow of the OR, they get an understanding of the culture, the culture, exactly, how things of the flow, OR. exactly, yep. how Absolutely. different uh, anesthetists do things differently, like they understand all of those foundational things early right. on, right, uh, which I think is really beneficial too. Yeah, and I always wonder, like, do they get only assigned to specific cases based on the, you know, kind of, like, for example, if you're studying up on peds, like, are you mm -hmm. going to get more exposed to children's around that time, which I feel like, again, would be extremely beneficial, or even if they didn't, it's like, Let's say you're in a room and you're starting an epidural and you haven't even learned about epidurals, but then when you actually do learn about epidurals, you're like, oh yeah, like, you know, yeah. I remember doing this in the OR and now you know how to apply that knowledge. And even then, I'm pretty sure with those care plans that they're doing, you still have to prep, you know, for the day for your case. So you have, you're going to end up learning it regardless. I think, yeah. I think honestly, like I said, it's really just self-dependent on yourself on what, how you learn best and, and, you know, what's your style of learning and what you're willing to take on because, no matter what, it's going to be hard. It's going to be extremely challenging. You're still going to be sleep deprived no matter which route you take. Yeah. So, and you're going to be awkward at take, one. Pick at, your poison. Right. You're going to yeah. be awkward at one point or the other. Like, everyone's a little bit awkward with front-loaded programs when we start clinicals. I'm pretty sure when people are in integrated programs and they start clinicals, they're like, you know, what, what the I hell doing? is this? What am I doing? You know what I mean? So, it's like, no matter what, you're going to go through all the phases. It's just going to be in a different order. So, up to you. Yeah, for sure. Um, and so me, I just finished up, I guess what they say was the hardest part of our program, mm -hmm. which is the summer. Yeah. So we just had a 15 credit, 10 week summer court, um, semester and it was rough, man. Like I remember when we first started our program in the summer, we had a 10 credit anatomy class. Oh yeah. And we were just like, man, this is crazy. We have a 10 credit anatomy class. We also had an advanced uh, health assessment class mm -hmm. so we had 13 credits over that summer and we remember seeing the upperclassmen and we met them and they just looked like they were beat down we were like man like we're going through what are y'all going through yeah and now we just went through that summer and we're like okay i understand now i get it yeah i get it no uh i'm so I, glad it's over i i it, it looked brutal um i feel like every program has a, a certain you know window window of where it's not time to mess around like you really gotta you know keep up with your material and and really you know put in that work to succeed and i feel like like i said every program has a little bit of that yeah, that's your 18 credit <laughs> man i thought it was never gonna end it was it was rough but you know what definitely worth it it shows you that you can push through and you you know everyone's capable of getting through a program at the end of the day i look at it as an investment like yeah i'm setting all this you know 
like, yeah, I'm spending all this time studying, but like I said, it's an investment for your future and how you're going to be caring for your patients. Mm-hmm. Suck it up, deal with it, you know, uh, short-term sacrifice for a long-term goal. So Put that on a t-shirt. I should. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so de- it's, 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 been, it's been exciting. And definitely now that I've been in clinicals for about two months, um, close to a ten mo- two months, I believe, it's, uh, I'm starting to like put things together and no way or form I'm any kind of expert at all, but it's just really nice to see the growth from day one, you know, to where I'm at right now. And my goal is genuinely to try to get at least 1% better every single time. And you need to remind yourself that as ICU nurses, as critical care nurses, a lot of us having this type A, whatever personality, you're always trying to like, you know, meet that above, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? You just want to be the best, I guess. Is It's like you're always trying to be like the best, right? No matter what kind of personality you are, but, it, you know, going into this field, you want to excel in whatever you're doing, which is 100% important, I support. But when you're in clinicals, you need to give yourself some grace. And that's something that I have been working on since day one of CRNA school, because it's not about being perfect. It's about being able to learn from your mistakes. I um, you know, even if you didn't make a mistake that day is being, um, you know, being moldable, being coachable and uh, taking all your experiences, uh, collectively thinking about them and figuring out like, oh, like I want to do this when I start practicing by myself or oh, I don't want to do it this way. And it's such a beautiful thing and so hard to explain sometimes because like I said, that first day I was like, oh, oh, we we really out here doing this. Like this is, this is real <laughs> life. You know what I mean? It's not like nursing school clinicals where you're just taking somebody's vital signs, like day one intubating, you know, placing lines, um, getting pimped, whatever the case was. So all that knowledge that you learn at front, whether you're in an integrated program or front loaded program, you really start, uh, to see it being put together. And again, um, I have seen like tremendous growth in myself from the start of this program, but also from the start of clinicals and to where I'm at right now. And it's all about the work that you are willing to put in and the effort and um, showing up every day with the goal in mind, not to be perfect, but to improve yourself 1% every single day. You know, one thing that I've learned over the past year or so is, you know, we get into a school and we're excited. We're like, yeah, like rah, rah, rah. Yeah. Uh, but then as you start learning all this pathophysiology and these different ways to manage these cases, you really understand like the responsibility that you have as a provider. It's huge. It's like, wow. Like this, it's is, scary. this is someone's life right. in your hands. Right. And it, it really drives you to really understand and be confident in like what you're doing and to know that if you don't understand something, like it's okay to ask the people around you so because it's someone's life in your hands you know yeah. like put your pride aside and like let's get through this oh ego's not going to serve you well at all in crna school so we'll start uh bringing that down if that's yeah. you know that's some, if that if that's one of your symptoms we'll start working on it because yeah and i also like what you said about the one percent better mm-hmm. every day and if you take that mentality where you're like i'm going to be one percent better every day if you think about 365 days you're talking about being three over 300 percent better at the end of the year, if you just focus on that 1%. And most importantly, focus on yourself. Like, you know, I don't really care what anybody else is doing. Like, it's me, I'm paying for this. This is my investment, willing to help other people out. I'm not saying that's not the case. But what I'm saying, I really truly just care about my success because if you're comparing yourself to somebody constantly or, oh, how come they've been doing these like these skills or these lines and I haven't gotten the opportunity? You gotta start questioning yourself and saying, okay, what is he or she doing that I'm not doing and how can I how can I get that opportunity, right? You gotta be mm-hmm. hungry. Like You gotta show up to clinicals freaking hungry. I'm tired every single day, but no matter what, I'm willing to put myself in any uncomfortable situation because at the end of the day, it's gonna be a learning experience. And I rather learn how to do something during this time, this forgiving time right now, than when I'm on, you know, on the floor by myself, you know what I mean? So yeah. um, comparing yourself to others, and we've said this in the past, is like the number way to rob yourself from it's happiness. Toxic. And it's hard to, too. It is. Because like, as we were talking about earlier with the integrated programs, like I see some of the SRNAs out there and they're yeah. like, I'm further along in my program than them, but they're like 
taking photos and videos like in the OR, yeah. and I'm just like, dude. Yeah, but like, you know, some of those people are cap. You don't know what they're doing. You don't know their you're success right, rate. You're right. You're right. But, but I'm, that's just, a, that's I'm just saying, like, I it's it's hard to like really step back and be right. like, like I'm where I'm supposed to be right now. Right. Like, I ha- you have to take. It takes a lot of like self reflection. Right. And um, I guess like focusing on like your emotions, you know, emotional yeah. understanding to. Yeah. To step back from that. You got to wake up in the morning and say, especially once you start going to clinicals, like, you're going to go come home. And I kid you not, if I would if I come home every day saying, like, damn, I sucked. Damn, I sucked. Like, you're, you're going to suck. Yeah. <laughs> like, you're feeding yourself this negativity. And, again, you're not going to clinicals. You're not expecting to be this, like, independent CRNA provider, like, from day one or month one or month two, you know what I mean? They expect you to grow. They expect you to learn. They expect you to ask questions. They expect you to be professional. They expect you to be kind to everyone in in the hospital. Like, they expect you, with the knowledge that you're coming in, to being able to apply it to certain cases. So, again, the biggest way to rob yourself of happiness is to compare yourself to other people or what you see on social media a good way that I've worked on changing that is, you know, you hear somebody doing a skill. Wow. How did you do that? Tell me about it. Do you have any advice for it? You know what I mean? That's how you can help the, you know, help the community, help your classmates and things like that. If you're out here being a hater, ah, that's on you. And that's, yeah. Some people just got hate in their blood though. That's ick. You know? So yeah, you got to get that about you, man. No, man. Like I, like for example, I was able to do the McLot mix and I was so stoked about that and posted a little syringe picture and had, you know, a classmate or two asking how it went, gave the ingredients. Like, Hey, this is how you do it. This is the formula. This is how much a drug you put in here. Like this, is how well it worked. This is all also other like, um, adjunct medications that we use throughout our case. So well, well, that's that's so that's so important though, because that's how you bring the profession up. Like I think a lot of people get stuck in this individual. Like focus on yourself, to no extent, doubt, one hundred percent. Yeah. But as a profession, we need to be sharing knowledge right. and to be encouraging others to be. Hey, this is how I did this. Have you considered doing this this way? You exactly. Know? That's how you evolve the profession. Like yep. like you said, this is how you grow the profession, and most importantly, it's all about our patients, right? Like waking up pain free. So. Yep. But yeah. Um, another question I was going to ask you is: Over the first year of your program, did you find that you changed your study techniques at all? Did you change how you did? Like, did you study from day one the same way oh, throughout the first not. year? No. Uh, what was the biggest change that you noticed? So in nursing school, I pretty much studied independently. So I will say, like, that really didn't change. I did have one classmate that I would study with, um, and we really got along in the ways that we studied and I, I saw a benefit in it. Um, when I first started this program, I started studying with about uh, two other classmates. By like day three, I was like, yeah, this isn't working for me the way that they study. It's completely different from the way that I study. And I was like, immediately, no, cancel, cancel. Like, I, I gotta change this up. So I started studying by myself and I realized like, oh, like, shit, this is a lot of information and I'm not really understanding certain aspects. And sometimes I like talking to other people and seeing where I'm going wrong on understanding something. Um, again, it's like a, it's a shock. It's, it's an academic shock whenever you first start CRNA school. No, no matter how bright you are, graduated top of your class, whatever the case may be in undergrad, and you come to CRNA school, it's undergrad on steroids plus more. Yeah, we're all little shrimps. No, yeah, you're like, <laughs> I didn't know that you know, the cell could go even deeper than it actually does. You know what I mean? It's wild. So um, I started studying with another person and it worked well. I did that probably for that um, first in-person didactic uh, semester. I did that for that first semester, but I did still study a lot independently. I was not ready to meet with this individual unless it was like two days prior to the exam because I am very selfish with my time and I wanted to make sure that I understood the concepts fully before you know, sharing my time before an exam with somebody else. And so for me, studying independently is what really works for me. Repetition is key. I utilize Notion. Like, uh, you can ask Cordero. He makes fun of me all the time. He'd be like, talking about a certain topic, I'd be like, I got a Notion for that. So me, I'm really good on memorizing. I memorize things very well. And, but I still am able to apply that knowledge that I memorize. So I'm not just memorizing to just like brain dump by the end of the day. Um, so yeah, loaded question, loaded answer. I basically yeah. evolved to studying a hundred percent independently by the second 18 credit hour course semester. And that's what worked well for me. 
Um, like I'm talking about when I say I'm repeating, like I'm going through my notions, which are extremely long, multiple times throughout the day. And um, I would I would divide them up within days and ensure that I can still retain everything and would start that process over every single day until it was time for my exam. Over my first year, I found that I studied with a multitude of different people. I probably studied with six different people. And I was talking to my mentee the other day and I was telling her that you need to not take things too personal when it comes to like studying. Oh my God. Like yeah. you can have people that you're cool with, but they might not be a good study partner right. for you. And it's not a personal thing. Like try to explain to them that it's not like, I don't want your feelings hurt, but it's just not working. Like we just can't study like this. And you know, some people are going to take it rough and be like, oh, well, the person doesn't study more and do whatever, think whatever they think. But to your very first point, like it's Ego. on you, like you're paying for this. Like if the study technique that you're using isn't working, then you got to change some things Absolutely. up. Absolutely. You know, uh, don't just stick around with your study group because you guys are friends just because you guys are cool. Right. You know? Don't get any FOMO like you're missing out with these people because we're paying good money for this degree. Like. I'm telling you, day three, I was like, nope, canceled, got to change this. And <laughs> I didn't even have a test like coming up, but I just realized like things weren't sticking. You know what I mean? I would ask a question and the way that these people would explain it to me wasn't sticking. And so like, you know, Cordero was saying is you, you got to, you know, you got to switch that habit quick because in CRNA school, at least for my program, a lot of my courses only had three to four exams and every test went up in weighted percentage. So you don't have a lot of room to screw up. I guess another thing I'm thinking about over the past year, and we kind of learned this when we start getting into school and you're studying for your interviews and things like that, it's like knowing the why. Like people always say that, like know the why behind it, but right. it's so important because there's so many things that overlap. Like so many disease processes overlap with so many of the medications and like you need to know how it all works and why right. it works. Uh, my professor told he continues to tell us this that if you understand pathophysiology if you don't understand normal physiology and pathophysiology then pharmacology comes easy because the drugs that we use are pretty much working on regular physiology that's they're mimicking regular so physiology or i was like oh that's that's a really good tip now so now i'm really focused on the pathophys and then you automatically know what the drug does right. based on you know Right. I mean, every farm lecture that we had would start with an introduction to the disease process and the systems, the transporters, G proteins, oh, what, G -proteins enzymes, man. whatever it was, understand the normal and then applying that pharmacology and those um, medications being put into play and what that's blocking or what it's triggering. So absolutely. My program, we have two advanced pharmacology classes and then we have three uh, anesthesia pharmacology classes. It's crazy, man. And the very first pharmacology class we had, they were talking about all the different receptors, the channels, and the voltage-gated channels, and the G proteins. Listen, G proteins aren't going anywhere. Dude, I, I they thought kept they introduced them to us, and I was like, oh, okay, G protein is going to do a little bit of this, no. and it's a little extra. Nope. Last quarter, they came back up, and they were probably the most important thing we learned that quarter. It's involved with all our drugs, literally. Yeah. They're going to keep coming. Yeah. So. 100%. Yeah, respect to the G proteins. Mm.